Hi guys, Nicky Joyce here, and today I'm going to show you how to repair an index controller with a broken battery. As you can see, I have three index controllers because the right one has died on me. So I purchased another one, but then the left died on me as well, so this is what we're going to repair today. Behind the camera I fixed the right controller, it now works well and I can use it. So how did the controller die initially? When I left it overnight to charge, it was showing as if it was fully charged, but when I turned it on, it lasted for about 30 seconds. Steam support refused to help with it, and they also refused to help me to supply a battery. This is why you can see those small power banks in the bottom of the controllers. It's not an ideal solution, and it can rip off your USB port. So, instead of using this abomination, I am going to use this little battery. It is rated for 3.7 volts, while index controller's battery is rated for 3.8 volts. I just didn't do my fair research when I purchased it, and currently I am waiting for 3.8 volt batteries. But it shouldn't be a big deal, because batteries charge to a higher voltage than shown on the package. So, let's begin. For this repair I'm going to use a certain set of tools, main of which are screwdrivers, soldering iron, manicure scissors, cupped on tape or heat tubes, as well as double-sided adhesive, a lighter, and a hair drying fan. To start with either a guitar pick or a thin sheet of metal, you need to pry open the panel that is sensing your fingers. Just tuck your tool in and start applying force. With a little bit of effort, the panel gets loose and can be detached. When you'll be removing it, be careful, because it's attached to a ribbon cable. You absolutely need to be extra careful with this connector. If you break it, your controller will not work, you will not be able to grab anything in the games. Before removing it, use your tweezers to detach a smaller cable. Free it from under the PCB, and then start gently pulling on it. It will take a little bit of effort, but it will come loose and get out. After you've done it, you need to lift up the miniature black holder of the ribbon cable. You can use something sharp, but be extra careful not to poke a hole in the battery, because if you do, it may ignite and you'll be dead. When the holder is lifted, you can just pull the cable and it will get loose pretty easy. As you can see, the connector is really fragile, and removing this ribbon cable without damaging it is essential for your success. When we'll be assembling the controller back, you will have a lot of troubles with it. Next, you'll need a screwdriver with Torx T5 and Torx T9. You need to unscrew the big screw with T9 on top of the controller. Next, you need to remove these four screws with T5. And bear in mind that the normal iFixit kit will not work for this. You will need a thin and long screwdriver to remove one of the screws. While undoing the screws, be wary of their position. Threading on them is different and if you'll miss the positions of the screws when you'll be assembling them, you'll be in for a hard time. Speaking of hard times, thanks Valve! I tried my longer cheap-ass Chinese screwdriver, which worked fine for the previous controller, but it didn't work this time. And I mean it, son of a bitch just didn't want to get opened. It is very easy to perform a repair if you have right tools and instructions. I have neither. So thank you, whoever designed this fucking screw. When this piece of bad engineering is removed, you can use something rigid to pry open the controller. It is not the full disassembly, but it will be just enough for our purpose. Here you can take a peek at the insides of the controller. You can also see the connector of the battery. For whatever reason, it is glued to the PCB, and people on Reddit supposed that they were finishing the design in rush. You can see three wires, we'll be dealing with them a bit later. You can also see a rubberized pad on the battery. It is a crucial component to prevent a battery damage, and it happens to almost any lithium polymer battery after some time. Next you need a hair drying fan and a guitar pick. Aim the fan at the battery for about 10 seconds. It will warm up the double-sided adhesive which holds the battery in place. After you do this, get a guitar pick and start poking on top of the battery. Again, you need to be extra careful with this. If you poke a hole in the battery itself, it may explode and you will die. What a surprise! So put the guitar pick on top, touching just the plastics, and slowly start going deeper with each poke. If you feel a lot of resistance, try warming the adhesive again. The whole process took me about 3 minutes. After this time you can see the adhesive, and at this point you can use something made of metal to get it loose. You can also open the controller a bit more and help yourself from the other side. You absolutely need to be careful when removing the battery, because there is a sharp corner which can damage the housing. But when you did it, I can only congratulate you, because you did the hardest part now. Let's measure the battery size, and decide if we want a thick or thin double-sided adhesive. 
Take a note that currently I am measuring the battery with a rubberized pad. As you can see, the replacement battery is gradually smaller. This means that we need a thick double-sided adhesive for it. Let's remove the rubberized pad and also measure the battery. Make sure to store this pad as we'll need to use it later. The original battery is still thicker than the one we're going to use. It will result in shorter playtimes, but since the Great Valve isn't providing a replacement unit, we'll have to do with what we have. After all the struggle, we need to do one more thing with the original battery. Which you can skip, but I'll still show how it's done. I'm going to harvest the original battery management system, or BMS. For this, you need to unwrap the paper cover. Who the hell thought that this is a good design? Then, you will need to open the cupped on tape. To do this, I'm using manicure scissors, and I'm trying to be extremely careful where I cut. Because, as you already know, if you damage the battery housing, you can die. Which I almost did here. But then I fallen back and decided to proceed with middle. It is wrapped up pretty good and my hands are still shaking after drilling the bolt. But finally I do have some success and almost ready to harvest the original battery management system. You can bend the battery legs a bit and now you can take a look at the BMS itself. We're going to use manicure scissors to carefully cut the battery legs. After you've done it, please make sure to responsibly dispose of the original battery. And here are some close-ups of the BMS. You can also find them on Reddit in the thread about unwrapping index controller battery. Next we're going to do a little bit of unsoldering. If you want to preserve the original BMS, which is basically my goal, you can use tweezers to hold the wires in place while you're doing the heating. Technically I believe that you can reuse the original BMS if you have a spot wielder. Next I'm going to cut a little bit of heat tube to isolate the connection. It is not necessary to use a heat tube as Captain tape will do just fine. But with heat tube it will be just easier to hold it in place. If you're going to use heat tube, remember to put it on wires before you start soldering. Next we're going to isolate the white wire. This wire is needed for a thermistor. It is a device that allows the controller to know battery charge level. It is also used to slow down charging if the battery is overheating. So once again we're leaving on the table one of the essential components of index controller just because Valve would not supply us with replaceable batteries. Not having a thermistor will mean that the battery will degrade faster and that controller will not be able to tell you when the battery is fully charged. Next comes time of soldering. Basically those wires are coming pre-tinned, but I still decided to add a little bit. I'm doing this just because I like doing it, even though I'm doing it wrongly. Now just hold one of the wires with my shaky hand and hit both wires so they connect. I wasn't really happy with how bent the connection was on the black wires, so I decided to quickly redo it. When you're happy with your connection, just try pulling it apart, and if it holds, you're done. If it doesn't hold, you can just resolder it. And here we have it, a battery with some good connections. After you've done everything, it's time to test your controller. And as you can see, mine works. If yours doesn't work, make sure that you soldered the wires properly. Next, I'm going to use heat shrink tube to isolate the connections. Normally, you do not want to use lighter with it, but I'm a lazy person, so... When you did it, go and test your controller. As you can see, for some reason, mine didn't turn on. But, in fact, it just indicates that the battery discharged. When I plug the USB in, and then turn on the controller, and unplug the USB, it works just fine. So keep it in mind, the battery may need some charging. Since it works with heat tube, it means that we did everything right, and we can proceed with the black wire. Just like the previous time, warm the heat tube, and test the controller. If it works, then this means that you finished the battery replacement. Next we need to do something with the long wires we got. But luckily for us, index controller has plenty of unused space inside of it. Just while tucking the wires inside of the controller, make sure that the wires aren't laying on the battery or not blocking the controller trigger. I like doing the white wire first and then applying double-sided adhesive onto the battery. It doesn't really matter on what side of the battery you'll place the adhesive if you will manage the wires properly. Also remember not to forget about the rubberized pad. You need to apply it to the other side of the battery. Before inserting the battery into the controller, make sure to open it wider. You don't want to damage the battery housing. And after you've done with it, the last hard part is remaining. I've been struggling with this connector for about 10 minutes. You need to position the ribbon cable extremely precisely. 
After you do this, you will need to shut down the top cover. If the cable is mispositioned, it will not hold it. You will need a lot of patience for this task. Frankly, I'm not sure why Valve didn't use the same locking mechanism as with the smaller cable. When I was repairing my first controller, I somehow managed to miss the opening parts and shoved it back in wrongly aligned, and it held just fine. You can tell from the video, I'm struggling with it right now. But after about 10 minutes of screwing around, a great success. It holds in place. If it doesn't fall out, it means that you did everything right. And it's time to finish the assembly. Remember to tuck down the red and black cables and make sure that they are not laying on the battery. If everything is fine, use tweezers to fix and place the last small ribbon cable. It is way easier to do, just make sure to push the right and left wings. Again, after that I am inspecting the large ribbon cable to see if it's misaligned, but everything seems normal. I am wrapping the small ribbon cable inside the controller so it doesn't wobble. And with this done, it's time to put our screws back. I like starting with the large one, because it holds the construction in place. Before the final assembly, it's time to test the controller for the last time. I'm putting back three screws I can easily work with, with my iFixit screwdriver, and since the fourth screw was drilled, we're done here. Now we're just putting the cover back, and we're good to go. The controller is now assembled, and you can use it in games. But first, you need to test that you did everything right with the ribbon cables. To do this, open SteamVR and navigate to settings in the bottom right corner. There, click controllers and then select a button test controllers. You will see all available inputs for your controller. Make sure that the grip, pull and force are working. If they do, you finished repairing your index controller. Thanks, Valve! I'm currently waiting to receive 3.8 volt batteries and when they arrive I'm going to use them instead. Maybe in the future some AliExpress sellers will develop batteries which will work for index controllers better. Or maybe even better, Valve will stop fucking around and let us buy the original batteries instead of buying a new fucking controller for $270. Remember that the battery we installed has lower capacity, it doesn't have a thermistor to let it know when it's fully charged or even show you the battery percentage left. And maybe I've done a lot of things wrong. But as I initially said, it's very easy to perform a repair when you know what you're doing and you have proper tools. Valve doesn't give you tools. Valve doesn't give you manual. Valve wants you to create more e-waste when the controller dies. So there is it. I'm finished. I'm done. My name is Nicky Joe, and if you like this video, please perform YouTube routine. Have a nice day.